Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Tumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations and internal security and also the analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And this session will definitely help you in regards to making sure that I will be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases from the entire newspaper or the analysis of the newspaper. I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be very very useful for you to identify and I will also make you uh, understand the importance of the keywords and the key phrases in identifying the factual and analytical questions for the prelims point of view. So definitely along with the prelims point of view the emphasizing of the keywords and the key phrases will also help you in regards to the answer writing that is in regards to the mains examination. So definitely your answer writing while you are imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answer write, in your answer writing that is in the mains so that your answers will be precise and concise and once your answers are precise and concise definitely you will score high marks in the mains examination. So thereby my emphasize throughout my lecture in this video in this session by emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases from the newspaper will make you understand and identify the factual and analytical questions for prelims and also by writing your answers which would be very precise and concise which is demanded by the UPSC from the civil servant aspirants thereby you would be scoring more marks or higher marks in the mains examination so definitely my session will help you in regards to cracking prelims and mains as well as 2020 and also 2021 and prior to that you have a notification in regards to let's crack UPSC CS English which is India's largest learning platform and once you get subscribed you will have unlimited live and recorded courses from the educators and the other privileges you get are the daily live classes live test and quizzes structured courses and unlimited access from the live on recorded courses and these are the educators which you can see on, on your screen and the courses offered are economy environment and current affairs along with the other courses which you can also see as well as essay writing internal security and social issues are also the one which are being offered by an academy and you have this Let's crack UPSC CAC English subscription wherein you have it for 12 months. The original price is 44,000. Do use my code SBT10 Sandeep Bhushan Tumala so that you will avail 10% discount on the original price that is 44,000 and the discounted price once you use my code or you can avail 10% discount and the discounted price would be 39,600. And you have the other subscription that is for 24 months. You can use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 to avail 10% discount on the original price that is 64,000 and the discounted price would be 57,000. So in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English 12 months 44,000 do use my code SBT10 wherein you can avail 39,600 the discounted price not the 44,000 and for 24 months while you use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 you will can avail 10% discount on the 64,000 and you need to pay only 57,600 and this session is in regards to the analysis of the newspaper again I reiterate re-emphasize that my tagline goes with emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases so definitely my emphasize is on the or my tagline is the keywords and the key phrases which will be certainly useful for prelims as well as mains examinations and before I get into the topic I would say very good morning to everyone who is in live and also in the live chat very good morning to all uh, Mahesh very good morning to you Sudarshanan Malvika Sajivan Sravani Venela very good morning Chetan David Paul very good morning to you all So now we'll get to the topic that is today's newspaper which talks about India China to cool down LAC tension. So we have seen that on June 15th and 16th midnight we have seen the entire face off and then because of that we have lost I mean India has lost 20 brave soldiers and post post the incident we have seen the still the engagement is going on in regards to the military engagement and also the diplomatic engagement so definitely the military engagement and diplomatic engagement is thoroughly going on to make sure that there is what you said the tension has to be pulled down or in regards to the situation what it is there that definitely both the countries are making sure that there is and what you say uh, disengagement of troops which will happen from the 
conflict area. So definitely mutual consensus. So definitely India and China have come up with the mutual mutual consensus. This is very important keyword. Uh, mutual consensus to a disengage disengage the eastern Ladakh area that is in the Galwan area. And we have seen the army chief M M Nara. Narwane have visited the Leh Hospital, that is the Ladakh Union Territory has visited and also this is a welcome move that because both the countries that is India and China are going at with the mutual consensus and in the process of the mutual consensus there are commander level talks, commander cops, commander level talks which are going on and this is making it very clear that these talks are getting into the mode of positive positiveness and that whereby there is and de-escalation of troops which is happening and this will happen in a phased manner de-escalation of troops from different places in a phased manner will take place because of the uh, commander level talks which are being taken up and this is a very good move or a positive move which is being taken up between both the countries to ease the tension between to ease the tension between India and China in regards to the LAC and we have seen the first corps commander talks have taken place on June 6 and then they have identified five location of conflict. So I was talking about the earlier also I was talking about the PP 14, 15 and 17A that is patrolling points of 14, 15, 17A which they mark and also the north bank of Pyongyang, So Lake and Chuzul. So these are the five conflict areas which they have identified on June 6 on the first corps commander talks. So why I am saying this is because the recent one which has happened is also uh, the uh, talks which is in regards to the corps commander level talks and because of that they have come to a conclusion that they have to come up with the measures to cool down or to ease the situation and then de-escalate the troops from different places in a different phased manner in a phased manner so that is very very important that the corps commander level talks are taking place and this is the first one when it has happened was on the June 6th. June 6th was the first and the, then they have identified the five location of the conflict that is PP 14, 15, 17 A, North Bank of Pyongyang Se Lake and Chuzul. Chuzul is also one which is a conflict area and it, if you look at the Chinese Foreign Ministry has rejected the statement made by General VK Singh. So we have seen that General VK Singh has made a statement that the Chinese have lost 40 soldiers, 40 soldiers on the June 15th and 16th class. And then the Chinese ministry has given a statement rejecting the statement made by the General VK Singh that 40 soldiers, that is Chinese soldiers have died in the clash. And he says it is a false information. So this also is very important because this is a statement made by the Chinese foreign minister itself. So the information what they say about the 40 Chinese soldiers being killed in the clash on the June 15-16 night is a false information. Now we will look at this. So this is the Chuzul area and this is Pyongyang Lake and this is Demchuk. Why I am saying is these are all the one which are uh, the conflict zone. So and here you have near Rakhala and this place the Galwan Valley, Galwan Valley, Galwan Ria, Rak Rakina, Rakinala and then Galwan Nala you have both and there you have the Galwan Valley and then this Depsangla Depsangla is also very important because this is a Depsangla Depsangla Depsang Plains wherein 2014 the Chinese have also intruded into India 2014 they have intruded into India that is through the Depsangla and again in 2017 we have seen in the which place 2017 the clash between India and China that is the face-off between Indian troops and Chinese troops that is in regards to the Chumbi Valley or Doklam Doklam or Chumbi Valley 2017 and 2020 now we are talking about this five five zones that is especially the Galwan Valley, Pyongyang So uh, Lake and then Chuzul and also the PP 14, 15, 17 and also this Demchuk area so this Demchuk Chuzul, Pyongyang Lake and also earlier is this one and Galwan Valley. So these are the ones which are very very important that you need to look at because of the geography map based. Geography map based which will be very very important. Chuzul, Demchuk and then Chumur, Chumar, Chumar is also very important because Chumar is also one which is a conflict area between India and China in regards to the LAC. Chuzul, Chumar, Demchuk and then even Depsangla uh, La Pass and also this is the Karakoram Pass. This is the Karakoram Pass and this place, this place is Daulatbag 
Daulat Beg Oldi. So this is a place wherein we have Indian Army base. Indian Army base around 16,000 feet height. So which is very close to the Karakoram base and pass and it is very very strategically important for India. It is very very strategically important for India. And this place is the Siachin Glacier which is the highest battlefield in the world highest battlefield in the world and this you has the loc or the kargil sector this year kargil sector fine so this is very very important in regards to the prelims point of view and uh, i've taken this especially for in in regards to the the way we need to understand different areas how the conflict is going on and how we need to link it for the prelims point of view prelims point of view and you have another pass also either here. Chipugi, La Pass, you have Depsang La Pass, Karakoram Pass, and then Tipki Pass. All these are very, very important for prelims point of view. Prelims point of view. Because there could be a question asked on the on the passes itself in the Ladakh region, in the Ladakh Union Territory, in the Ladakh Union Territory. And there is another news which talks about India, China need to help face Lauro. So definitely we have the uh, external affairs minister Jay Shankar has gone ahead with the video conference in virtual summit. Virtual meet has gone ahead in regards to the RIC. RIC is Russia, India, China. Virtual foreign ministers level talk have taken place. Virtual foreign minister minister level talks have taken place. And then on the behalf of this or on the backdrop of the Russia, India, China foreign ministerial level talks when it has taken place yesterday. So Russian foreign minister Sergei Lavrov have made it very clear that there is no need for mediation in regards to the India-China face off which is taking place between India and China that is the LAC and they say that it can be resolved by both the countries, both the countries itself and then what is important what he said is it is in favor of the interstate relations based on the firm that is he is saying that definitely the issue what is happening is has to be resolved bilaterally has to be resolved bilaterally between india and china and he always is in the favor of that is russian foreign minister sergey lavrov and behalf of the russia is saying that he is in favor of the interstate relations interstate relations which it can be dealt bilaterally bilaterally and this is very important and he is also focusing or or is stressing on the generally recognized international legal basis so he is very clear that the bilateral issues between or else the face off of the skirmish between India and China along the LAC has to be resolved bilaterally and that bilaterally when they are resolving they have to recognize they have to recognize the international legal basis. So what is very important what he is trying to emphasize here is that the both the countries have to look into the international legal basis to ensure that there is global stability to ensure that there is global stability and general prosperity so definitely this is in regards to what you said making sure that generally recognized international legal basis and this is very important key phrase here and then global stability is the keyword and then general prosperity is the keyword please do make a note in your answers in your answer i mean in your book so he is stressing on the generally recognized international legal basis and by that what will happen is we need to make sure that there is a global stability and then general prosperity. So these are the two keywords which are very very important in making sure that while you are writing an answer in the mains you need to make it very clear that how the both the countries have to work together in tandem to make sure that there is a resolution or the pending resolution has to come forth making sure that we follow the recognized Indian international legal basis. And why we have to, what you say, follow the international legal basis to ensure global stability and then general prosperity. And this is what is very, very important for the main keywords and the key phrases. And our external affairs minister, Indian external affairs minister, S. Jayashankar, has also said that the fundamental principles. So he is also focusing on the fundamental principles of international relations. So this is again very important key phrase. So our external affairs minister, S. Jayashankar, has uphold or he is emphasizing on the fundamental principles of international international relations and why because it is very necessary in maintaining the world order in maintaining the world order and this is another key phrase key word or key phrase so look at it it is very this entire this is very very important in regards to the 
prelims and mains point of view and i will go into a little bit depth of uh, what do you say explanation here not the normal one but a little bit depth of explanation i would go in and i would be reiterating each and every time what are the keywords and the key phrases which are very very important for you all to make a note in your notebook or in the answer uh, or in the paper what you are carrying and this is very important generally recognized international legal basis said by the russian foreign minister sergey lavrov and our indian external affairs minister has said that we need to or he has emphasized on the fundamental principles of international relations fundamental principles of international relations and he says that it is very important to uh, emphasize on the fundamental principles of international relations because we need to maintain the world order why it is this this world order or new new world order this concept is very important new world order or this what is a phrase is very very important so here what is important is maintaining order in the world or new world order is very important and the principles of inter or fundamental principles of international relations are very important which has been emphasized by the indian external affairs minister s j shankar and he has also made it very clear that we need to always make sure that we respect the international law we need to respect the international law and also we need to make sure that we recognize the legitimate interest of partners so definitely it is a recognizing the legitimate legitimate interest of the countries that is when he is focusing on the partners it is india and china so definitely what is very important is the key phrase or the keywords or that respecting international law respecting international law and then recognizing the legitimate interest of the partners so definitely is making it very clear that both the countries have to resolve the issue making it very clear that the national interest are protected national both the countries national interest are protected and he also emphasize on supporting multilateralism so this is what i was emphasizing n number of times in my sessions earlier that is what is important how the india how india can go ahead with reinventing or reviving the multilateralism and then here he is talking about this supporting multilateralism and promoting common good so definitely these are all the one which will actually get into the mode when we have all these keywords in the key phrases in what you said trying to have the diplomacy so we can have this diplomacy in a perfect way bilateral relations can happen diplomatically only when we try to get into the mode of emphasizing on the keywords or the key phrases that is respecting international law as emphasized by the our external affairs minister jay shankar and then recognizing legitimate interest recognizing legitimate interest that is legitimate so definitely we have to make sure that we are focusing on the national interest and which is legitimate in regards to the international laws and then making sure that we support the multilateralism multilateralism and promoting common goods that is helping both the countries helping both the countries and also it has to be mutual coordination or mutual understanding or win win situation for both the countries it should be promoting common good for what to build a durable world order and this is very very important see look at it the i mean the the uh, india is emphasizing each and every every time at the uh, uh, multilateral stages at the multilateral stage whenever it gets a chance it is talking about the new world order it is talking about the reforms which has to take place in the unsc it is talking about the reforms which has to take place in the world trade organization it is talking about the reforms which has to take place in the who so definitely it is talking about the new world order and it is supporting the multilateral is rather than the unilateralism that uh, decisions which are taken by us or china and he has also our uh, external affairs minister has also reemphasized or reiterated the belief in time tester principles of international relations so as we were talking about the focusing on the focusing on the fundamental principles of international relations focusing on the fundamental principles of international relations and he emphasizes that yes there is a time tested there is a time testing of times it is a time tested time for the principles of international relations and at this time we need to make sure that we are abiding to the principles of the international relations we are abiding to the principles of the international relations is the emphasis made by our external affairs minister that is india's external affairs minister mr jay shankar at the ric virtual foreign ministers level talk and he is also talking that definitely there is a challenge to the in regards to the principles of international relations and even he is talking about the challenges he is also talking about the challenges to the concepts and norms but equally of the practice so definitely he is talking about the practicing the norms concepts 
norms and practice of what the principles of international relations the principles or the fundamental principles of international relations is focusing on the fundamental principles of international relations that all the countries have to focus or abide by the respecting international law recognizing, recognizing legitimate interest of partners and supporting multilateralism and promoting good common good and he has also emphasized he has made a speech in his speech he has also emphasized on the world war 2 because we know that our defense minister mr rajnath singh has visited russia in regards to the having or being part of the uh, world war 2 world war 2 that session which is going on in russia to be part of the it it has gone and based on that again jayshankar has made a statement in regards to the post world war order so definitely is talking about what is the scenario post world war 2 that is after 1940s after 1940s that is the defeat of the nazis that is germans so in the post world war 2 what is the new world order which is emerging and when we are looking at the new world order it has to be looked into that each and every country is following the fundamental principles of international relations and he also said that the order came to replace the previous one so definitely as i was talking about 1940s that is the world war 2 post world war 2 the kind of what you say situation which is replacing or which has uh, made sure that as it was inherently flawed and denied india its due recognition so definitely prior to prior i'm saying prior to world war 2 india's india was what you said denied its recognition or it was flawed and denied whatever it is supposed to what you say have it so that was denied and then he is making it very clear that india has helped we helped to keep key supply lines open for both your countries that is russia and china russia and china one through so definitely india has helped russia and china in making sure that the supply lines are open how by supply lines or by opening the supply lines where in the persian corridor in the persian corridor and also in the himalayan hum that is in the himalayan uh, countries or himalayan ranges or himalaya itself Himalayan mountains or ranges. So definitely, it has made it very clear that we were denied or we were flawed that in regards to our recognition post pre 1940. But post 1940, that is World War II, we have definitely a new world order, and also we have helped both the countries in making sure that supply lines are open along the Persian corridor and the Himalayan. So definitely, is emphasizing on the kind of uh, fundamental principles of international relations which have been followed by the india by india towards russia and china in the in the summit that is virtual summit he has emphasized in the russia india china multilateralism that is a foreign ministers virtual summit level and he has also emphasized on the order of the red star and this is very 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 important for the prelims point of view because many of you many of the civil servant aspirant might not focus i'm making it very clear might not focus on this statement whatever Mr. Jayshankar has mentioned during his virtual uh, summit, virtual talks, he has mentioned about the order of the red star, order of the red star and the medical mission and the medical mission. So definitely these two keywords are very, very important order, order of the red star and the medical mission. So I will definitely look at this and he has also emphasized on the Dr. Courtney's, Dr. Courtney. So why I am saying is there is a, there is a possibility that UPSC might what you say skip what mr jayshankar or foreign minister has external affairs minister has said but there could be a possibility that he they would be getting into the depth of what the speech of the external affairs minister mr jayshankar has said that is he has focused on the order of the red star and the medical mission so we will look at these two what do you say key phrases so my focus is on the order of the red star keyword and the medical mission keyword please make a note in your uh, books so definitely he is also emphasizing that what india has uh, or india's role in the world war ii in the world war ii so definitely we will now look at order of the red star and this i'm giving it exclusively for you because it is not in the newspaper this order of the red star he is not in the newspaper he newspaper he has in the newspaper you have just only this statement of the order of the red star and the medical mission led by dr Courtney's was a legend in china that's it that is what he the mr jayshankar has made it 
in this speech but this is an extra information additional information i am giving it for the civil servant aspirants to my students and you will be benefited through my lecture and this is the uh, what do you say uh, the key phrases or the my tagline what is that emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases so here the keyword is order of the red star and the medical mission so what is order of the red star yes definitely the soviet i mean the, then the soviet union we have supported the uh, world war 2 on the behalf of the soviet unions and then we have fought against the nazis nazis so in regards to the what do you say appreciation from the soviet union for the goodwill and assistance by the indian army please do understand by uh, in regards to the appreciation for the goodwill and assistance of the indian army to the red army's gallant so this is red army gallant of russia or soviet union struggle against nazis so as we were part of the red army gallant in the world war 2 fighting against the nazis so in regards to that the soviet union has given an appreciation of the goodwill and assistance to the indian army and on because of that they have gone ahead with conferring the order of the red star order of the red star so what is this order of the red star so definitely this is the one which is very very important and the order of the red star was given by i mean it was presented in july 1944 and this i'm saying this entire slide is not in the newspaper i'm giving it additional information and it was awarded or it was presented to zubedar narayan rao nikam and then to havildar gajendra singh so these two indians i mean army indian army were awarded the order of the red star order of the red star which was presented by the soviet union because we were part of the red army's gallant which as supported the soviet union to fight against the nazis in the world war ii in the world war ii so the narayan rao nikam and then Havildar gajendra singh were awarded the order of the red star and narayan rao nikam was from bangalore that is karnataka and Havildar gajendra is from what do you say uh pitrogar district pitrogar district district which is now what do you say uttarakhand then up but now uttarakhand right and then they were serving in the general purpose transport companies of the Royal Indian Army Supply Corps. So they were part of the Royal India Army Supply Corps. So therefore, because of their goodwill and their assistance, that is Indian Army, they were awarded the Order of the Red Star. And this is very, very important for prelims point of view. I'm saying it not because I'm exaggerating. This is what you need to focus while you're reading the newspaper. You need to identify the keywords and the key phrases how you need to get into the depth of how the UPSC might, what is might, I'm saying how the UPSC might frame the questions. And then Mr. Jay Shankar also has made the statement here. See, look at it. He said the Indian personnel were conferred the order of the Red Star and the medical mission and the medical mission led by Dr. Cotnis. So we will look at this medical mission and who is Dr. Cotnis because again I am reiterating this is not mentioned in the newspaper. This I have taken for your benefit. Once again I am reiterating and then we will look at what is this medical mission and why Indians or Indian doctor have been to China. We will look at this and which is very very important for conceptual and better understanding for prelims point of view. You as a civil servant aspirant and then this medical mission is Cotnis is Dr. Dwarakanath S. Cotnis. So his full name is D. S. Cotnis. That is Dr. Dwarakanath S. Cotnis was sent to China. Was sent to China. And then Rahul Busari has also joined. Uh, Rahul, very good morning to you. Ketan, very good morning to you. David, all very good morning to you. And he was sent to China in 1938 as a Indian medical mission. In as part of the Indian medical mission. He was sent to China in 1938. Why? Because China was invaded by Japan. In 1938, China was invaded by Japan. And when the China was, there was a war situation between China and Japan. And then India has sent the Indian medical mission. And then Dwarakanath S. Cotnis was part of the mission in 1938. Why he has been there? To serve the front line and he has saved the lives of many Chinese soldiers. And look at what is happening today. Chinese soldiers are having the face off with the Indian soldiers. And that is what, what do you say, uh, uh, India or External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar has reiterated on or, or brought to the limelight that how India has helped the Chinese soldiers 
in the war that is when japan has invited china in 1938 as part of the indian medical mission so he is dwaraknath s kotnis 1910 to 1962 and he has definitely what you say uh, later on later on uh, what you say this uh, uh, this dwaraknath s kotnis he has uh, uh, fell in love with the uh, chinese uh, nurse and he married the chinese nurse and he was there itself and he has passed up passed away i mean his last breath or last breath or he has passed away that is dwaraknath s kotnis passed away in china itself in china itself and then you have dwaraknath s kotnis sister sister who lives in what do you say mumbai and then definitely the chinese officially whenever there is a diplomatic relations when the chinese official come to india they visit dr dwaraknath s kotnis sister in mumbai in mumbai so this is an additional information which i have given which could be part of the prelims question asked by the upsc and jay shankar also focused on the normative aspect of international relations so definitely his focus is in regards to the fundamental principles of international relations and i was talking about this zubeda narayan rao nikam and haveldar gajendra singh so definitely this is an additional information again i am giving it to you the russians honors for indian soldiers so this is very very important which after the post world war 2 india has indian soldiers were honored and then right right is this is zubedar nr nikam nr nikam and this is additional information i am giving and is avaldar gajendra singh so this is a rare photograph rare photograph which is what do you say very very important that we need to uh, understand how the india china relations or then the soviet union relations were there so these are the two indian soldiers who were honored by russian and what is that that is order of the red star order of the red star now i'll move to the one so yes but after all this chinese foreign minister has hinted at bilateral issues so definitely chinese foreign minister has specifically said that yes we will go ahead with resolving the issue bilaterally resolving the issues bilaterally and then he has all called for revitalization of the three countries that is revitalization or making sure that we will again have that revival between all three countries that is india russia india and china and then he also made it very clear that we will i mean both the countries will come up with the bilateral issues correctly treating and properly handling sensitive factors so definitely when we are going ahead with the diplomacy it has to be a skillful diplomacy skillful diplomacy wherein skillful diplomacy will handle the sensitive factors very 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 what is say positively and then the discussions among mr lavrov that is foreign minister of russia and india and china have uh, definitely been in regards to the including interministerial meetings in regards to the defense there will be discussions health culture and technology so what is important here is How, which will be the areas which will be discussed between the RIC or which have been discussed between the uh, foreign ministers level at the RIC that is in regards to defense, health, culture and technology. So these are one. It is not only defense but also health, culture and technology were discussed. And slash staff at mission India tells Pakistan. So this is another news. which we are talking about definitely that uh, there is an uh, issue between india and pakistan and that is what we have seen that the espionage or terror related issues or activities are taking place uh, by the officials of the pakistan high commission by the officials of the pakistan high commission in delhi so definitely espionage means spying espionage means spy so spying and then terror related activities have been taken up by the officials of the pakistan high commission in india and because not only that it is not only in regards to the espionage and terror related but also we have the other one that is in regards to the ill treatment ill treatment which is happening by the pakistan high commissioners towards the indian high commission officials in islamabad so that is why we have reduced the staff of the strength in both the both missions that is in india and also in in the what do you say pakistan so definitely india has reduced slash slash in the sense 
reduce the staff at mission that is in the indian high commission officials in us islamabad so it has brought down the the uh, the, the number of uh, officials that is in regards to the indian high commission officials in islamabad it has brought down to the strength of only 55 and we have seen the same kind of slash or reduce of the officials in the high commission indian high commission officials in islamabad last time it was in the year 2001 why because it was the attack on parliament aftermath of the attack of the parliament on what you say it was on december 13th 2001 it was December 13, 2001. It was attack on the parliament and after that we have gone ahead with the reduction of the diplomats. So last time it was 2001 and now it is 2020, 2020 because of the espionage, terror related and ill treatment and ill treatment of the Indian officials. And then definitely this reduction, uh, this, uh, it is because it is the latest series of measures which have been taken up in regards to both India and Pakistan bilateral ties have plummet. Plummet in the sense have fallen down or dropped the plunge. Why? Because of the Pulwama terror attack. Please do understand. This is the, what you say again, background. Why the reduction of the strength in the, from the Indian side, in the uh, Indian High Commission in Islamabad is taking up because Pulwama terror attack, we have seen that and also the article 370, abrogation of article 370. So definitely we have seen right from 2001, we have seen and then later on 2019 and now 2020, the reduction of the staff from India side because of the Pulwama terror attack in 2019 and also the article 370 abrogation, we have seen that is because of the uh, reorganization of, of the state that is Jammu and Kashmir by splitting or bifurcating Jammu and Kashmir into Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, Union Territory and the Ladakh Union Territory and the government has also said that the behavior of the Pakistan should be in conformity that is in tandem with the Vienna Convention and then in regards to the Vienna Convention and in regards to the bilateral agreement. So definitely it is India is sending a message or passing a message that Pakistan has to maintain that behavior in regards to following the Vienna Convention that is the rules and regulations of the Vienna Convention peace process. And then in regards to the bilateral agreement, what we have between both the countries in regards to the treatment of diplomatic and consular officials, treatment of diplomatic and consular officials. And then if you look at February 15, that is 2019, India has revoked the MFN trade status. MFN in the sense, it is the most favored nations, most favored nations in regards to the trade we have. So that we have revoked it and August 7, 2019, we have seen the, after the article 370 and when we have come up with the JNK and Ladakh as the new two union territories, we have also what is a pulled out or we have reduced the reduction or reduced the staff of Indian, uh, high, Indian uh, officials in the High Commission, Indian High Commission in Islamabad. And the next one is May 31st, we have seen, I mean I have also said this in the news, I mean in the, in the discussion, explanation also, India has expelled two Pak High Commission officials because they have also ill-treated two Indian officials who were the drivers, who were the Indian drivers, who were in the, what is the Indian high commissioners in Islamabad, Pakistan security agencies have ill-treated them and that is the reason we have gone ahead with now slashing reduction of the staff. And then the other news is in regards to the pandemic accelerating as cases top 9 million. So definitely there is a concern across the world, across the globe and definitely the uh, WHO chief that is address Gebrosus has made it very clear that they, the situation is worse that is the global coronavirus has stopped the 9 million 9 million and WHO is warning the pandemic was accelerating so definitely the COVID-19 pandemic is accelerating is increasing because of the the infection cases are increasing globally that is it has touched 9 million as per the WHO and the, it is also warning that the kind of what you say Latin America and South Asia are beginning to feel the force of the pandemic or beginning to feel the force of the pandemic that is Latin America and South Asia we have seen the the kind of what you say emergence the kind of the virus which is spreading virulent is absolutely seen in the Latin American countries and South Asia and this is just the beginning of the feel of the full force of the pandemic it is just the beginning and in the other regions when we are talking about other regions South Korea is now experiencing the second wave, second wave and then even we have seen China experiencing the second wave and there is a news that even USA would also experience the 
second wave of the covid 19 pandemic situation so when the when the once one side of the world or one region of the world or a few countries in the world are just beginning the full force of the pandemic and then the other side of it is the few countries are experiencing now the end wave of the covid 19 pandemic situation that is south korea china and then usa also and definitely this has been said by the who director general that is tedros adnas ghebrusus told a virtual health forum when he has what do you say uh, gone ahead with a meeting in regards to virtual meeting which has gone ahead which was uh, organized by uae uae and then tedros has said that it is a greatest threat it is not only virus itself please do understand this concept this statement which is very well made because you never know the same statement might be asked in the mains examinations might be asked in the mains examinations and they would say discuss or comment so he says the lack of global solidarity and global leadership what is the greatest threat is not the virus itself but it is the global lack of the global solidarity and global leadership and this you please take it as you please write it in your notebook key phrase the the issue or the greater threat the threat now is not because of the virus itself it is because of the virus no doubt but it is not only because of the virus it is also because of the lack of global solidarity it is lack of global solidarity and global leadership and these two key words are very very important while you are what do you say you are in regards to your understanding of prelims and also mains point of view so global solidarity is very important global leadership is very important and that is what is lacking now and because of that the threat or the virus is spreading virulent and the threat is not just because of the uh, virus itself but it is the lack of global solidarity and global leadership and he has also mentioned this and this is very very important again he also said we cannot defeat this pandemic with a divided world look at it the statement very very what is a impressive statement and it is the what is reflecting in the in the world now because we have seen us and china right and then now you see india and then china the uh, skirmishes what are happening and then the us which has in regards to the uh, the killing of the george floyd and then the kind of what you say the uh, blacks or else uh, the one who are uh, having that entire revolution uh, the kind of what you say revolts which are happening across the world especially in the what you say us and then even in regards to the europe europe so definitely it is a divided world now and this is how you need to focus while you are writing the answer so it is not just because of the us and china but what is happening here india and china and then in regards to george floyd the death case because of the us uh, army a uh, us uh, police which has what do you say uh, taken a life and that is creating a ripples of agitation in the entire us and also europe so definitely he says that we cannot defeat this covid-19 pandemic with a divided world and he said the politicization of the pandemic has exacerbated exacerbated in the sense aggravated itself why because of the lack of global solidarity solidarity and then global leadership and there is one more news which talks about the h1 curbs misguided and awful so definitely we have seen the donald trump the us president has come up with the again making sure that the h1 b visas are again stopped until the end of 2020 and this the nascom that is the national association software service company nascom means the national association indian software industry body that is the national association of software service companies have May, uh, has made a statement in regards to the us restricting the non immigrant visas that is h1b visa so it is restricting us has restricted the h1b visas and then in regards to that that is until the end of the 2020 the uh, nascom has made a statement that it is misguided and harmful to the us economy itself so while you are trying to restrict the h1b visa uh, h1b visa or the non immigrants who are getting into the Uh, us he is a misguided and harmful to the us economy itself us economy itself and then he has also made it very clear that the american economy especially including in, in, especially, especially the manufacturing and the medicines wherein you have the skilled workers in the manufacturing and the medicine you, you have the skilled workers that is the immigrants immigrants that is on the h1b visa so definitely the at this situation at this situation the skilled workers when you are having the shortage that is the us 
when it is having shortage it will have its impact on the manufacturing and medicine especially focusing on the american economy itself american economy and this will make sure that the other countries for innovation and productivity will be affected in the america itself and then he was they were also that is nascom also made it very clear that indian nationals and others who were granted h1b visa and l1s visas up till what you say uh, which was after june 23 will not be allowed to enter into united states so who are been uh, given uh, h1b visas or l1 after the june 23 will not be allowed to enter the united states until the proclamation expires so definitely it is a kind of situation wherein it is a worry for the indians especially for the indians wherein they will be getting into america as the migrants and then they would be working for them and also making sure that they will also get some opportunity that is job employment so here what i would also focus one more thing is that this is the additional information what i am giving to you which is not in the newspaper which is not in the newspaper newspaper just talks about h1b visa and l1 visa h1b visa and l1 visa so i will focus on the types of visas which will be useful for the prelims point of view because based on the h1 h1b visa and l1 visa there could be possibility that the upsc might focus on the types of visas and then you could ask in the match the following match the following that is on the left side and the right side the visa's name and then what purpose it is so match the following in the prelim for the prelims point of view there could be a possibility so that is why i have taken this types of visa so h1 visa is only for the what is says skilled employment and its validity is for 3 years and maximum is 6 years and then they are dependents or admitted as h4 dependents are admitted that means h1b visas dependents are admitted as h4 please do understand h1b visa are the one skilled employed who have the validity from 3 year to 6 years and then who are dependent on h1b visa dependent on h1b visa will be given or admitted as h4 h4 is the spouse may work spouse in the sense the wives may work in some instances please do understand the linking h1b visa for skilled employees and the spouses of the h1b visa will be admitted on the h4 visa and they will be having i mean h1b visa will have the validity of 3 to 6 years and h2b visa they are must have a foreign residence so they one who are having the foreign residence will get the h2b visa will having the h2b visa must have a foreign residence in us and this will be temporal or seasonal so h1b is only temporary or a seasonal and it is a max of only 2 years maximum of 2 years which will be for a seasonal or temporary work and these are not convertible to legal permanent residency so foreign residency uh, that is H h2b visa are not permitted or they are not convertible to permanent residence permanent residence and then b1 b1 visa b1 visas are the one who are in related to the business related project so who are entering to us in regards to the business related that is the visitor for business so definitely the one who is visiting in regards to the business related project will be issued the b1 visa and b2 visa is for the tourist visa who are getting into the us for the tourist visa and it could be for tourism business or medical treatment so there would be many indians who are getting into us for the medical treatment so they would attain or they would get the b2 visa and then they would get into us and then go ahead with the medical treatment medical treatment so it is in regards to the tourism business or medical treatment they would get into us under the b2 visa and you have f1 visa which is funded by it is for the students f1 visa is for the student and this f1 status is the one when wherein the student can go ahead with the pursuing their uh, pg program or masters program in us uh, universities in us university wherein when they are going there they, they would be funded by personal sources outside sources or combination of both the two please do understand the importance of the f1 visa is for the students and they are when they are getting into uh, various uh, us universities for the masters or higher studies they will be funded by the personal sources or the outside sources or by combination of two and then they can go ahead with the part time on campus employment part time on campus employment and the one who is having this f1 status may work for full time please do understand f1 status students they are funded for by the personal sources or outside student sources and they can work as a part time on campus employment and they have this work they can go ahead with the work full time they can work for the full time during the period of recess that means whenever there is uh, the university <coughs> the pursuing the 
higher studies, whenever there is a recess that is a break, they can go ahead with the full time work. The one who has the FN status and J1 status is the one, it is in regards to the definitely it requires a large or substantial portion of the funding. Then this is also again for the students, but it is from the portion of the funding which comes from the outside sources such as university or the government. So definitely J1 visa will be granted to the one to the student who will be getting the funding or who will be funded by the outside source. Outside source in the sense who, who the university, the one be the one where the student is wanting to pursue the education, higher education or masters or from the government itself. So definitely it is the government or the university which funds outside source. So they will be getting the J1 visa. The one inside or the what do you say inside source or personal source or the outside is the F1 visa and they can go ahead with the part time on campus but they have also can go ahead with the full time work but only with the permission of the alternate responsible officer and you have the O1 visa. This is the non-immigrant visa which is extraordinary ability. They are given to the one who are having the extraordinary abilities that is in the field of expertise. So definitely Indians who have the extraordinary abilities and they can who can work and it will be beneficial for the US and also for the Indian Indian uh, immigrant. So they will be that means who are having the uh, having their uh, extra capabilities extraordinary capability in the field of expertise. They will be given O1 visa. It is an offer of offer of employment. It is an offer of employment from US employee or US companies to prove that they are an extraordinary in the field and then E1 visa. E1 visa is the one which the which allows the nationals from certain countries to come to US. So few countries it will recognize and it will allow those countries uh, nationals to come to India uh, come to US or get into US for what to trade practices to go ahead with carrying the trade practices and this is in tandem with the treaty of traders or treaty of investors. So definitely you have this treaty which is in regards to the trade and they will be given the even win even visa and you have tn visa tn visa is nothing but created by nafta nafta is the north american treated agreement nafta is the north american treated agreement and these visas are only given to canadian and mexican so it is only given to canadian and mexican citizens to come to us to work for the us employees so definitely this is and what you say extra information which i have given in regards to making sure that you have the additional information in regards to the entire visas itself. So it is not just you are trying to look at the H-1B visa what the uh, US is gone ahead with stopping them. No, you have to look at in regards to this entire scenario that how many types of visas are there when the Indians would get into the US for different types of it. And this is very, very important for the prelims and also better understanding as a civil servant aspirants, as a civil, civil servant aspirants. So we have looked at various scenarios which will be or which will definitely help you in regards to the prelims as well as mains point of view because I have emphasized on the keywords and the key phrases at length at length so that so that you will not miss any kind of any kind of questions at least from my session because I have reiterated the keywords and the key phrases. So my session I hope it was definitely useful because I have focused not only in regards to the IR or IR related or India and the US but also looked at the way the international organization that is the WHO is also going ahead with few of the keywords what he, uh, the WHO director general has emphasized on that making sure that how it is the lack of global solidarity and global leadership which is actually the virus is increasing now and it is a greatest threat not because of only virus but because of the lack of solidarity, lack of solidarity and that is very, very important. And then this also we have looked at when it was and then uh, the treatment of the diplomatic and consulates officials between both the countries have to be taken into consideration in regards to the Vienna Convention and the bilateral agreements between both the countries and the staff has been reducted last time in the year 2001 and now it is 2020 and earlier also it was uh, in the 2019 post Pulwama attack and then the abrogation of article 370 we have gone ahead with the reduction of the staff in the uh, Indian High Commissioner in the Islamabad. So we have also seen extensively what our external affairs minister has spoken about has spoken about in regards to the how India has helped both Russia and China in regards to the 
uh, talking about uh, the order of the red star and also in regards to the indian medical mission to china and how dwaraknath escortnis and then narayana narayan rao nikam and then havaldar gajendra were awarded or presented the order of the red star order of the red star and then we have looked at all the keywords and the key phrases which are very very important for the mains point of view which is very very important that you can focus directly mentioning mentioning them as i have spoken about the fundamental principles of the international relations where our uh, external affairs minister was emphasizing a uh, reiterating time and again in the entire virtual meet between india russia and china foreign level ministerial foreign level uh, talks foreign level ministerial level talks have taken place and this also i have looked at that how how important is the five conflict zone wherein the first time we have come up with the talks that is the commander level talks on the june 6 on june 6 and then depsang plane also i have spoke about when uh, china has uh, entered into indian territory phase of and again 2017 the chumbi valley that is doklam and then both the countries have come forward to make sure that they are trying to de-escalate the or ease the tension or de-escalate the troops and then ease the tension between india and china so definitely all these are very very important for prelims point of view and i definitely feel that this is a very very important session for you as i uh, what do you say uh, repeatedly or it has become a fashion that daily uh, class will be definitely very very important for prelims as well as mains point of view because my tagline which goes ahead in regards to emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases has really helped you and then make sure that you uh, do like the video share the video and also subscribe the let's crack upsc cac english for 12 months and also 24 months and if you haven't still download the academy an academy learners app do download and then be part of the unacademy special classes wherein you can have access to various courses by various educators also so while you are going ahead with subscribing do use my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala wherein you can avail 10 percent discounts and uh, the other channel where you can also have the access is upsc cac english and the telegram link is let's crack upsc cac english and then you can also join me to my uh, to my telegram link that is t.me slash sandeep bhushan sbt i repeat t.me slash sandeep bhushan sbt and then i would thank everyone and then all the best for your preparation for civil uh, examinations make sure that you are uh, getting into the mode of consistency and then uh, strictly follow the schedule whatever schedule you have planned strictly follow it and then make sure that you uh, try to take care of your physical and mental uh, health also. Thank you all. And then I thank everyone Mahesh, Sudarshana, Malvika, Sravani, Vanilla, Chetan, David Paul, uh, Rahul, everyone. And then see you again at 10 15 a.m. See you again at 10 15 a.m. for the editorial analysis. Thank you. And then all the best for your examinations. Take care.